Welcome once again, this is Brother Scott. I have a King James Bible, so I am armed. And as many of you know, I do travel. I travel seven days a week. It's really no secret. Um, I do furniture repair for several places, and it requires me to travel into three different states, North Carolina, Virginia, and Virginia, or West Virginia. So, what are we going to be talking about this time? We're going to be talking about, in our King James Bible, the importance of eternal life. How important is eternal life to you? Now, I don't mean this just if you're lost. I mean this is if you're, if you're saved and you're watching this. If you're saved, how important is eternal life to you? You say, well, Brother Scott, I'm already saved. What kind of question is that? Good. I'm glad you are saved. Now, how important is your eternal life to you? See, here's the thing. According to the people that keep track of the population, there's over 8 billion points, 8.3 billion people on this world. That's a lot of people. So instead of being focused on everything else that I consider to be distractions and it all is tv movie sports politics religion uh social outings i mean i'm not saying lock yourself up in a box but what i am saying is those that are in the box need to pay attention oh pop behave Bruce Wayne, I have not told anybody about your secret identity as Batman. And um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to let you know about that. And um, also a nod to our new groupie cheerleader, Ryan Sumners. Uh, he has this tantium steel thing that shoots out of his hands. It's one of, uh, he's like a superhero. Um, actually, the name of the superhero just went out of my mind. <clears throat> but he's got the pork jaw sideburns and <laughs> has the metal shooting out of his hands. Calls. So, um, anyways, that was a distraction. And that was the purpose of that, was to show it as a distraction. How important is eternal life to the saved person? It should be very, very, very important. The reason I say that is when you hold in your hand a King James Bible, you hold as an ambassador for Christ, as a member of the church, the body of Christ and members in particular, as a saint, you're holding the words of life when you hold that King James Bible in your hand. So let's take a glance and just run through real quick how important eternal life is. So let's look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and look at verse 15. Actually verse 14. No, 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 no. Change my mind again. 13. Now I would not have you ignorant, 
brethren, that oftentimes I proposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto. So he's held back for whatever reason. That I might have some fruit among you also, comma, even as among other Gentiles. Notice the word in front of Gentiles says other. Just want to let you know that. There's tons of Gentiles here. Well, maybe not tons, but there's a lot. Because he says other Gentiles. He didn't say as among other Jews and Gentiles. He says as among other Gentiles. Pay attention to the context. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. Here comes the colon. So it's continuation off the same information, but a little more different direction in the detail, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Now, these people are already saved. These people already, the, the, the vast majority of the people here he's writing, because he's calling them brethren, and then he says, among other Gentiles. Paul's not a Gentile. He's got Gentile citizenship, but he's not a Gentile. These people are saved. But he wants to be there to preach in person the gospel of Christ, which allows people to have eternal life. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And a lot of people have trouble with that verse. They don't want to quote the whole thing, and I've done that. Here's the thing. When this epistle was written, there was a transitional time period still in effect. So you've got the kingdom church, and you have the body of Christ church, both in existence simultaneously. So there's things going on in that time period that's not going on now. So that's one of the reasons why you see to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therefore, this is for therein, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So what is it that is so important about eternal life? Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. There we go. Went a little too far. Ephesians 1. And let's see. Look at verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure. Whose pleasure is it? It's God's. His good pleasure, which he hath pur purposed in himself, now, why am I saying all this? Because this is important. This is to the body of Christ. But we need to be mindful of this, about our eternal life. 
and why we should share it with those that are of this world that are perishing, that are dying, that are going to hell. Paul doesn't use the word hell one time in Romans through Philemon. Why is that? Because we're not going there. That's why we should be more adamant about getting the gospel out, folks. They don't have to go to hell, but they're going. We fell through the cracks. Despite everything Satan did, we fell through the cracks. And the body of Christ is achieving more and more self-awareness on this world as a whole. We need to be mindful of that. We need to quit fighting amongst them ourselves, especially in front of them, because they're watching. We need to set aside our petty differences and get this gospel out, because while we're fighting with each other, thousands of people are dying and going to hell. And it's going they're going to hell on our watch. I thought about this last night. It's, it's a sad commentary in itself. When we would rather spend more time fighting. And infighting is the better word. Than sharing life with those that are on their way to death. Verse 10, Ephesians 1.10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Notice it doesn't say in earth. That doesn't include those in hell. It says on earth, the ones that are on the surface of the earth, not the ones under. It's very specific. Don't worry about the Greek. Don't worry about the Latin. Don't worry about the Hebrew. You got it right here. King James Bible it says on the earth, not in, not under, on. These are the ones we share the gospel with. Even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. The determinate counsel was in eternity past. The body of Christ was discussed with the determinate counsel. Who was there? The first family in the history of eternity. The Godhead. Here we go. Verse 12 and 13 that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. I have iterated this time and time and time and time again. Is it just enough to say, trust Christ? Is it enough just to say, well, if you're here today, And you don't know if you're going to go to heaven. Trust Christ. I hear this over and over and over. Guess what? If that's all we're saying, they're not going to make it. They're going to end up in hell. And once they go, there's no way out. But... We can define through the greater context what is trust in Christ. Hmm. Look at verse 13. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. What is the word of truth? It's the gospel. How do we know that? Because after the comma, it says, 
the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believe. See, you believe it, but then you trust it after you believe it. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And how do we know what that is being sealed? We're sealed unto the day of redemption. How do we know that there was something put down against us since where the redemption lies for us? Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. What is the down payment or the dowry? The Holy Spirit. We became the habitation of God. If we're the habitation of God, who's residing inside of each of the believers, sealing their spirit and their soul? Holy Spirit. Thus, he is the earnest or the down payment and we're the purchase possession. Now, said all that because I wanted you to see the gospel of Christ is the power of God. It is the power of God. It, the gospel of Christ. But then when you come to Ephesians and you go through here and you get down into verse 13, it says, after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So after we heard it, then we trusted. But before we trusted, we did something else. else. It says, in whom also after that ye believed. So we trusted what we were told in the gospel. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. But after we believed it, we trusted it, and we believed it, then we were sealed. So where do we go from there, from Romans 1.16 to Ephesians 1.12 and 13? Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. Fifteen. So here we go. Moreover, brethren, Roman uh, First Corinthians fifteen, one through four. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received. Okay, that receive. That's the same as what we saw in Ephesians 1, 12, and 13. You trusted, you believed, received. And wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. That word vain, I gotta get me a sip of keto coffee. Believing in vain is empty faith. Somebody comes up to you and they give you the gospel and you're just like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, I, I believe it, I, I gotta go. Is that really believing? Or is that just, yeah, 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 yeah. That would be one way. Another way is if you read verses 11 through 19. There is also the example of believing in vain. The gospel of Christ in its entirety is in three parts, death, burial, resurrection. But in verses 11 through 19, in the context, there's this belief similar to the Sadducees because they didn't believe in resurrection, so they're sad, you see so here we go. 
what is the gospel that we should be giving? Verses three and four. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Hold the phone right there. This is the gospel which we're saved by. But Paul just gave us a little tidbit right there on the page. I also received. Paul believed that gospel. I've heard some say he didn't believe it. Yes, he did. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have wrote that. And the words that are on the page, whether you like it or not, are preserved by the Holy Spirit, not 54 men. The Holy Spirit used those 54 men because they were tools. Holy Spirit preserved the work, not man. Not the wisdom of man, not the wisdom of this world. Holy Spirit. If he can't preserve his word, how can he seal you? I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our, Paul includes himself in that word when he says, our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures so what is the primary message of eternal life how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is why I ask, how important is eternal life to you as a member of the body of Christ? This is our life. This is our existence. This is who we are. Should we not pull people out of the fire, so to speak? It's mentioned in Jude. And Jude, even though this one chapter epistle is in front of Revelation, Jude one twenty three. Now, the verse is not transdispensational, but the precept of what the verse is saying is. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Pulling them out of the fire. How do we do that in the dispensation of grace? How do we pull them out of the fire? We pull them out of the fire with this two-edged sword. We pull them out of the fire by sharing and giving the gospel that saves today. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 is the meat of that gospel. Romans 1 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Ephesians 1, 12 and 13. That is a basic understanding of how the gospel works. But then we've also got one other little thing. I want to throw in from Ephesians Ephesians 
Ephesians 2, wherein, no, wait a minute, Ephesians 2, not Ephesians 1. Ephesians 2, for by grace, verse 8 and 9 and 10. For by grace are ye saved, are, present tense, right now. Are ye saved through faith? And that not of yourselves, it is, it is. What is it? The gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation, everyone that believeth. Here we have, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are, present tense, right now, his workmanship. It's not our workmanship. We're not our workmanship. We're not working ourselves into heaven. But we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now let's think about that word works because people get that and they get in a tizzy. Let's see if we can illustrate this. If you're a Jew under the law and you say you have faith, you have to have works to prove your faith. Well, that's physical works. We're a spiritual, pe uh, spiritual people. We reside in earthen vessels. We're just a spirit living inside an earthen vessel. So that word right there works, okay? So if we're saved by his grace and we're saved through faith, that's not fleshly salvation. It says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Boasting would be fleshly. So therefore, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, spiritual works. Renewing your mind. Renewing the mind of other people in the body of Christ. Edifying the body of Christ. Spiritual works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. It's not physical works, folks. It's not soup kitchens. It's not pantries. It is studying this book and renewing of your mind. And not just your mind individually, all the minds of all the members of the church, the body of Christ, and members in particular. Now, if there's somebody watching this video and you don't know if you were to die today, if you would go to heaven or to hell. Today would be a good day to change that. All you got to do is simply believe how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And if you trust and believe this gospel, God will in no wise reject you. This has been Brother Scott. I thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.